Hello everyone and welcome to Game 2 now in the series between Hyung and Kaz. Game 2 taking place here on Entombed Valley. Hyung spawning as the red zerg on the bottom left hand side. Meanwhile, Kaz spawning as the green Terran player on the top right. Now in Game 1 of the series we did see both of these players go for fast command centers and hatcheries. We may see that a similar strategy come down in Game 2 since the maps are fairly similar, only two spawning locations, and this is one of those situations where you're trying to uh, get a gauge on your opponent and figure out what exactly they're going to be doing. So far it looks like standard builds coming in from both of these players. Now for those of you guys who do watch me on a daily basis, there are more games to the series. I am just going to be stopping the cast at the end of this game for today just because I am still a little bit jet lagged from my trip um, to Taiwan really really just trying to recover there as quickly as possible. We are seeing still some heavy droning coming out from Hyung. Meanwhile it doesn't look like a barracks is coming in for Kaz or nope it looks like he is going to be building a barracks now so it is not going to be a similar build as it was in game one. Now the key thing to follow in for Kaz now will, is will he be going for a refinery? If he does go for a refinery then that means he is going for very heavy, uh, going in for a little bit faster tech but it does look like it is going to be a one rax expand against a hatchery first. So it is going to be 15 hatch versus one rax expand here on Entomb Valley and we'll see how, these ga how this game does play out. A drone should be making its way over here from Hyung sometime momentarily as a marine will be popping out and perhaps being able to get off some key shots. Now the drone scout should be able to make inside the base to see at least if there is a Vespian geyser being taken. Spawning pool already coming into play as well. We will see if we are going to be going into any extractors early on. Extractors early on do normally mean faster metabolic boost. Meanwhile, it looks as though Kaz isn't. Kaz is just going to be setting up his command center at the natural, allowing the Overlord to gain sight. Pretty much seeing the timing on that command center lets Hyung know that it is in fact a one wax expand, and now that the gas is going to be established up a little bit later. Now. By this build, getting up a refinery here, I would normally expect a second refinery to be taken. The reason behind this is that Kaz didn't establish two additional barracks. So it looks like Kaz is going to be doing the one rax expand route into a little bit more of a heavy tech play. We are going to have one marine sitting down here on the low ground. It looks like the marine will just be heading over to this Zelnaga tower here. Meanwhile, Hyung already does, did enough scouting and he's just simply going to be droning up and training up a lot of queens. Command center about 30 or 75% completed. We are going into a third command center from Kaz. Alright, so this is not the build that I was expecting him to go. Getting up a third command center means that he's going to be going for a very fast economic game, but make it look like he's not going for a fast economic game because the Overlord scouted a one racks expand. Now Hyung may try to play a little bit more defensively, perhaps expecting reactor hellions, but Hyung also going and setting up a macro hatch in a beautiful location here, making the choke point a little bit more narrow. The only problem is going to be the fact that if marines and marauders are able to get into this position here, they'll be able to destroy, hit the hatchery while the queens can't really get within range. If they try to get within range, they'll actually be blocking their own choke point and it's going to be very difficult to make a move out. We are going into a reactor hellion play. We are going into a, that refinery now. And this is a, perhaps a very interesting timing from Kaz. A one rax expand into one gas reactor hellions with a third orbital command. And the timing on this couldn't be executed more perfectly as we now see a starport coming in. A tech lab may go down here in just a moment. And now we, this could be a transition into perhaps Cloak Banshees. So, clo uh, so it was Cloak Banshees, a very heavy tech like I originally thought. But it isn't, in StarCraft, it isn't what units that you get. It's often the path at which you get it. And Kaz, even though he is currently behind in terms of overall supply, is going to really benefit with that third mule and being able to train up three SCVs at a time.
All right. What is going to be going down next? That is the key question. The Hellions are already making a move out across the field. The Queens are going to be able to push back this aggression. And what I do like about Hyung's play here is he knows that a third base is a little bit more difficult to take because it is um, very, very exposed. And he doesn't, he isn't trying to establish it. He is also getting in a lot more queens. You can see that he's still training up queens, even though he already has four on the field. So with four queens on the field, with the fifth one being trained, he's really going to be able to push back any sort of banshee harassment. So Hyung, with that supply advantage, should be able to move on into the mid game very well. The only problem is that he's already oversaturated on drones. You can see he's currently sitting on 62 drones on two bases. He is already mining at max efficiency, efficiency and he's not going to be able to do very much more. Now, it is going to be good news as Kaz is going to be coming in, but there's already Queens in position. Oh, both sides fighting and a little bit of a starburst action coming in as the Queens were able to push back all of those units and now those Queens laying down some more creep tumors, more Queens joining in and there are a lot of Queens here. Oh, oh in comes a Banshee. The Banshee going to have a very bad day. Down it goes and Kaz investing very heavily into a Banshee that didn't deal any damage whatsoever. Hellions now going to be making their way into the third, won't be able to burn it down, but will be able to at least get in some damage on it until the queens do get over. The queens, once again, throwing those darts very, very um, well, dealing eight damage per attack as the third base from Kaz has already been established here. A Zergling did scout it though, as we now see the Marines um, just trying to protect this third base here, but we are now transitioning into a Spire. All right, Spire tech now being added. And I'm a little bit curious as to how much damage that Spire is going to be able to do. You really need a lot more gas for those Mutalists to be effective. You can see that he's only going to be able to harvest about 400 gas a second as Zerglings now look to come in. Maybe able to finish off the Siege Tank and the Marauder down over here. Yes, the Siege Tank does go down, so a little bit of a nice trade there. As the Zerglings try to finish off a Marauder, yes, get off another Marauder there. As the Hellions once again trying to torch these Zerglings. A Siege Tank, Zergling, and a battle happening once more. That Siege Tank needs to be careful as it looks like the Hellions will finish off the last of those Zerglings there. It is going to be three bases to three, and Hyung now with 72 drones on three bases, but going up against 61 SEVs and on three bases as well. That is not going to be a good trade, especially when you add in all of those mules. Kaz really in the driver's seat of this game, and now Hyung forced to take a quick fourth base well before, uh, before the 11 minute mark. And this is expanding towards his opponent. This hatchery could fall very easily. You can see that the high ground off over here, siege tanks could blast away right here and take it down in just a matter of seconds. And there is also a very wide ramp here. Creep tumors need to be spread over. Hyung already on top of that, going to perhaps be laying down double creep tumors in just a moment as we see the Hellions taking control of the center Zelnaga tower. Siege tanks, level 2 uh, weapons and armor upgrades for infantry, level 1 for the armored vehicles there. More Zerglings being added as the Hellions are going to be backing off. Mutilus going to quickly take down one Marine there as the Mutilus are now looking to get in a lot more damage. Missile turrets are being established as we see that the Mutilus did tip their hand a little bit prematurely. How much damage can be dealt is the key question here as the Mutilus cannot go up against this group of Marines. We can see that one Overlord may get taken down here as the Medivacs are offering sight up onto the high ground. We can see a lot of Banelings and Zerglings are lining up to hit the third base, trying to expand and hit a base all at the same time. Meanwhile, Thors are being trained and a whole bunch more Marines. Is it going to be enough damage? The Banelings are upgraded 1-1 one, one, and here we go. The Zerglings are going to be coming in. Siege tanks trying to come in. Mutilus now trying to just land on top of all these units here. The Banelings are going to be taking down a lot of the Siege tanks and perhaps some of the Marines as well, finding a lot of that damage. And beautiful play by Hyung, being able to just utilize those Banelings and take down so many of those Marines. But now it looks like the Mutilus have been taken down as well. Zerglings now running back around the far corner and not that much damage was dealt actually into the mineral line here with the harvester count sitting at 72 to 75 this is still Kaz's game even though his army is significantly smaller 
Queens, Zerg Queens are ready to go. Zerg Queens are upgraded 1-1. One, one, but the Siege Tanks are already upgraded. We are now training triple Siege Tanks off of three factories. And going into a fourth command center here. Marine's going to try to hold that Zelnaga Tower in the center. Will be able to do exactly that as the Zerg Queens try to take down more destructible rocks. All right, opening up the field is exactly what Zerg wants to do right now, allowing the crashing waves of the Zerg reinforcements to find their targets a little bit more quickly. Thors are upgraded 1-1, one, one, and now this is one of those situations where it is actually important for the Thor to actually get upgraded to 2, um, or sorry, 1-0 um, to 2-0, as then it will be able to two-shot some of those Mutalists. Zerglings will finish off these rocks here in just a second. More Zerglings still being added, but take a look at the army, a very large mineral army here. As long as the Zerglings are able to make their way in anywhere, they could deal a lot of damage. So far, it looks like the Overlord is off over here. We are going into that infestation pit. A lot of bandings now being added. You can see the, what, 44 bandings being trained on the field. Scanner sweep up onto the high ground reveals all of those bandings as they now are retreating. There are medevacs in the air. Fungal growth is not in play just quite yet. We don't even have the pathogen gland, so infestors will be a little bit delayed as Zerglings going to be trying to surround and taking down a lot of those Marines. Siege tanks are blasting their way through. Both sides are still fighting. Mutalists are getting taken down here as the Banings are trying to find their target. Overseer joining in on the fight, but Kaz really dominating the center fight here, and this is not looking good at all. Siege tanks are getting cleaned up, though, so it is now 123 to 129, so the reinforcements and the destruction of the destructible rocks, a key factor in this game, as by taking down those rocks, those Zerglings arrive just a little bit faster as Kaz now trying to reinforce. 3-3 three, three upgrades coming in, level 2 vehicle weapons upgrade, so the Thoris will be able to two-shot those Mutalists. If any more Mutalists do get added, we are young running on four bases compared to a three-base Terran, but that is with a whole bunch of mules, and now the Medivacs adding reinforcements here, and also a command center going to be landing and upgrading to a planetary fortress most likely. All right, the production tab, army tab, pretty much shows a pretty even game. The problem is that Kaz still is establishing up his fourth base here. We'll be able to transfer some SCVs and set up a planetary fortress pretty easily as some mules will start to strip mine here in the center fourth base. Zergling is looking to take down a lot of these marines. It looks like, nope, only a couple marines and Zerglings lost in that exchange. Banelings now want to perhaps land in here as we are going into infestors. I'm not 100% sure if I saw actually saw the infestation pit upgrade pathogen glands. Yes, the pathogen glands research has been done as Banelings are now making their way over. Zerglings getting to get ready to run in as the Banelings looking to charge in, not really finding any units there. Kaz with very good map sense, uh, seeing those Banelings come in uh, from the far side because of that sensor tower, saving himself a lot of head headache. Zergling is now looking to come in here. The Planetary Fortress can can still one-shot this as the Banelings may be able to finish off the Planetary Fortress. There he goes, Zerglings, Banelings, Marines trying to engage once more as Kaz now needs to rebuild another command center in order to establish that and it looks like he's already doing exactly that as we now see a fifth base from Hyung which looks like it will get taken down before it even gets up and running. Siege tanks now ready to go making their way in. Infestors with a whole bunch of energy will be able to fungal growth and here we go fungal growth across multiple marines that is huge as we could have chain fungal growth and that may be the deciding factor here, the in infestors are now all burrowed, and Kaz has take, has dealt a, a devastating blow to Hyung, but has lost a lot in exchange. The Marines are now upgraded 3-2, soon to be 3-3, as there are still so many Marines left in this group. Infested Terrans now looking to pop out here in just a moment. There you go. And are those Zerglings going to be enough to reinforce siege tanks now? Going to be sieging on the low ground as the Marines are getting elevated up onto the high ground. Infestation pit does go down. No more infestors at all. And it looks like the Broodlings are going to try to finish off more units here. There's the GG. TSL's Hyung loses game two in this series. Stay tuned for game three. Um, I will be posting them up tomorrow, July 10th. Um, sometime in the afternoon and Pacific time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed it.